I'm Bobby Lee, here to take you through our interactive API Explorer. I'll first show you how to create a customer, then have that customer create a payment, and finally refund that payment all through the Explorer. Let's get started. Prerequisites. First, you'll need to create a Square Developer account at developer.squareup.com. For this example to work, once you've logged in, you'll need to create an app. I already created one, so I'm good to get started. Okay, now let's open up the API Explorer. Head over to the docs and then scroll down till you see developer tools section. Okay, first things first, let's make sure you're in sandbox mode because if we're in production, we'd be making real changes to your account. Now where it says select API, select customer's API. And then for the endpoint, let's choose create customer. Below that, click access token and choose the app you wanna use for this example. We're just looking to grab a customer ID, so let's fill in the bare minimum to create a customer which is an email address, a given name, and a family name. Then click Run Request. On the right, you'll see the customer was successfully created. And another fun thing you can do is see this request in something besides curl. Moving on, let's copy and save the customer ID returned. The next thing we'll grab before jumping into creating a payment is the location ID of the particular business or store we are pretending to buy from. This isn't required to make a payment since Square will link the payment with the main location if it's not required, but we're going to explicitly set it. So now let's select the locations API, and then for the endpoint, we'll want to stay on list locations. And you'll see below that the access token stuck from our last request, so let's keep that the same. Now you can just click run request to get your location ID for this particular app. So copy that value and save it for later. Now that we have the customer ID and the location ID, we can jump right into creating and refunding a payment. So let's select the payments API and then for the endpoint, choose create payment. Now let's start plugging in the required values and a few extra to create a basic payment object. Since the access token has carried over from the last two requests, we can start below that with adding the amount of money. I'll just do 100, which is in cents, so that's $1. And then I'll do USD because I'm in the US right now. Next is generating an item potency key. We have several videos on what this variable is, so make sure to watch those. But long story short, this unique identifier is to make sure if we run a request more than once, it will be processed at most only one time. We can just click here to generate an item potency key for this request. Okay, next is the source ID. So because we're in Sandbox, we don't need to create a payment form on the site to get a nonce to put in the source ID. We can simply just automatically pull in this test value, just like we did with the item potency key. So I'm going to choose CNON card nonce OK from the drop down to test a single payment. And then I'm going to skip a few that aren't required. But let's make sure to add the location ID and the customer ID we saved from before. And lastly, a note to explain what it's for. OK, now let's run it. And awesome, a 200 response and status completed. So now that we've created a real test payment and fake transaction, let's refund this dollar to my sandbox account. So before we leave this page, we'll need to grab the payment ID. So now that we have that, let's select refunds as the API and then set the endpoint to refund payment. Again, let's skip the access token because it's been carried over, then set the amount of money to 100 and USD again and then generate the item potency key. This does not need to be the same as the item potency key from before. And lastly, let's paste in the payment ID. Okay, cool, let's run it. And refund completed, awesome. And then to make sure all is good, I'd love to show you how this will come through in your sandbox dashboard. So let's navigate back to our developer dashboard and scroll down to where it says sandbox test accounts. And below you'll see default test account and an open button. Click open, and once you're in, on the left, you'll see transactions. And then on the nav bar where it says all types, click refunds and make sure the date is set to today and you should see it pop up. And that's it. This is a basic example to get you comfortable playing around with our API Explorer. Let us know what you think in the comments. Happy coding.